In this video, I'm going to show you how you can adjust the encoding on your cameras to get a better remote viewing experience if you have a slow internet connection. So first, I'm going to right click. I'm going to go to the main menu. I'm going to log into my admin user using the graphical user password. In here, I can go under camera at the bottom under management and then go to the encode screen. It may take you to the registration screen, but you're just going to want to click on the encode screen. Here you can see and on my grid you saw I only have one camera connected to my NVR. Here we can see there is a mainstream and a substream. And as you can see here are some of the settings that you can set for the encoding of your camera. For example, resolution, frame rate, the bitrate type, and then finally the actual bitrate number. And then you can also select the type of recording, but for remote viewing it's generally going to be the general type of recording. Now usually for remote viewing you're going to want to leave your mainstream the same because this is going to be the recording on your local hard drive. You don't really want to mess around with this too much because when you're recording on your hard drive you're going to want the highest resolution from your camera. In this case this is a full 4K camera and I'm going to want the full 4K video from my camera as it's sitting on my house or business. In this case, I'm mainly concerned about the substream. The remote viewing apps will automatically open the substream when I try to pull up my camera system. And then also on the PC software, I can set it to pull up the substream if I'm at a remote location on a laptop or desktop computer. So here I can first want to enable the video substream, which it should be enabled by default, but if it's not, you're going to want to enable that. And then again, this may look different on your interface, but this premise is still the same regardless of the interface. You would just go under the camera and encode screen to get to these settings, enable the substream, and then the substream is really going to be what you want to modify on your NVR or DVR to better your remote viewing experience. As you can see, this particular camera's substream is automatically set to the H.264 compression with a D1 resolution, which is 480p, a frame rate of 15 frames per second, and then a constant bit rate of one megabit per second. Now, in our article, we do cover how one megabit per second is gonna add up really quickly depending on the number of cameras that you have remote viewing. For example, if you had all of your camera substream set to one megabit per second and you try to view eight streams at the same time, you're gonna want at least eight to 10 megabits per second of upload speed. And then again, as described in our article, that is not too common of an upload speed unless you pay a lot of money for your internet or if you have fiber internet connection. So in order to alleviate that, if you have a slower connection than say that eight megabit to 10 megabit per second upload rate, maybe you say you have a two to five megabit per second upload load rate, but you still wanna view eight cameras. This is an eight camera recorder that I am making this video on. Let's say you still want to view those eight cameras. You can of course come down here without changing any setting and come to your bitrate setting and lower this down. Uh, again, eight by five would be 440, so that would give you around a four megabit per second upload speed requirement to view eight of these cameras. Now the thing about this is when you go ahead and adjust this, I'm going to click apply here, um, you, you, you're going to be able to go to your um, NVR and switch this from mainstream to substream, which is gonna pull up that video. Now you can see here I have no artifacts or glitching going on in my video after I've set it to a 512 kilobit per second bit rate. So that setting will probably work for remote viewing as well. But if you try to make that number too low and try to squeeze too much video data in a small bit rate, then you may run into some of those video artifacts or some of those video glitches on the mobile app or PC software or even on your NVR as you're viewing it. So again, to check my substream, I just went up to the top of this channel. Here you can see it says switch stream when I hover over it, I can click on this and change it from mainstream to substream one or if the camera actually has a substream two. So again, to get back to my settings, I'm gonna go right click, go to main menu, management under camera, and then it brings me back to the encoding screen. Now, for example, if I had an even slower internet connection, I would have to modify and change this to a lower resolution and a lower frame rate, or I can also use H.265. Now, this particular NVR and camera do support the H.265 compression. If your system does not, then you unfortunately cannot use that. H.265 is gonna give you a little more savings on the encoding 
bit rate. So again, I could probably lower this down to 256. And again, just using doing some math here, 8 by 256 would give you a roughly around you know 1.6 to 2 megabit per second upload speed, um, and allow you to view your eight cameras just fine. Again, this all depends on the number of devices that you're viewing, the bit rate that they're using. And again, this is covered in the article in detail. Uh, so I'm going to again click apply here. I'm going to right click to back out, right click to back out. And here you can see now we're starting to see the video stream here lag somewhat. Um, the car there is kind of jittering across. And this is again due to that bitrate setting. But however, we do see that the H265 and compression is working with that bitrate that I've chosen. So I can right click again, go back to main menu, go under camera, and it takes me back to the encoding screen. Some other things that you can do if these bit rates are not working for you and this compression is not working for you, you can also reduce your resolution to VGA, which is 640 by 480, or the SIF resolution, which is 352 by 240. Um, and these lower end resolutions will also allow for much, much lower bit rates. As you can see, I could go as low as a 64 kilobit per second bit rate, and that's almost enough to remotely view my system if I had, say, a DSL internet connection with a very, very low upload speed. So, again, just to reiterate and, and cover what has been covered in this video, you would come into your encode camera settings, you would go over to your substream, first make sure that's enabled, then you would set a compression. If you're NVR or DVR supports the H.265 compression, you will definitely want to give that a shot. You can modify the resolution down from D1 to a VGA or SIF resolution. You can even adjust the frame rate. And then you, of course, want to use the constant bitrate setting to ensure that this bitrate setting does not uh, move around or, or raise whenever a certain amount of video is coming through your camera. And then, of course, you would want to come down here to click Apply to save your settings. So as you can see, I set it to an H.265 a compression rate, a resolution of 240, which is a SIF resolution. And I could possibly even set this bit rate even lower, say down to 128. Now, since I have eight cameras, that almost puts me below the one megabit per second upload speed, which would be great for a DSL viewing. So I'm going to click the apply button here to save my settings. I'm going to right click. I'm going to right click. It's going to take me back to the view of my camera. Now, the thing about this, as you can see, setting it down to a SIF resolution in such a low bit rate really makes the video hard to see. However, because you have a slow internet connection, this may be your last resort in order to remotely view your system from another location. But as you can see, it still pulls up video, and you can still kind of tell what's going on. And if somebody were to come close to the camera, you would be able to see them and identify that they were coming to your building, and then you could pull up the mainstream from one of your cameras and be able to see that person's face a little more clearly and hopefully that increases or betters your remote viewing experience thank you for watching